Okay, let's install PyTorch so that you can use it for deep learning with Python on Linux. Now this is Linux for the desktop. I'm using a Lenovo ThinkPad P53, which Lenovo was kind enough to give me for the YouTube channel for a couple of weeks. So we'll see how to do this on Linux on the desktop. We're using Ubuntu in this case. Okay, here we are in Linux. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to my GitHub repository. I'm going to use Chromium. And here we are at my GitHub repository. You'll go into my deep learning course, install, and go into the PyTorch July 2020 version of it. If there's a later one, then definitely follow that one. So the first thing we're going to do is install Minaconda. Now you can use the full-blown Anaconda if you like, but I prefer to not have everything in the world installed at once. Now I do say Python 3.7 here. 3.8 is now available, so we'll do 3.8. You can see here we have for Linux, we'll do Python 3.8. We will download this version. Download whatever the latest version here is. We'll download the specific, we'll create an environment that has the specific version that you need for PyTorch later. So it's downloading this. This is essentially a file that, a shell script that we're going to give permission to execute and then execute. While that's going, I'm going to go ahead and launch my terminal. Okay, it's done. You can see it here. Actually, I have to go into downloads and there's the, the version of it. I have to do a chmod plus f, otherwise we, whoops. Otherwise, we won't have permission to, to run that. And then I'm going to go ahead and run it. Welcome to Python 3.8. Go ahead and press enter to continue. Go through all of this and we'll say yes. And I like that location. Lenovo is my user directory that Lenovo set up as the, the default for this computer before they sent it to me. And it is grabbing all that it needs. This may take a moment, so... I will go ahead and fast forward through this. And yes, we do want to initialize it. This lets us hook into our shell so that it can interact with the operating system properly. Okay, and we're done. We have installed Minaconda 3. Now I'm going to go ahead and install Jupyter. Copy this. This is essentially the IDE, so to speak, integrated development environment that you'll be working on with this. Oops. Didn't copy and paste everything I should have. Conda install Jupyter. Okay, it has to figure out all the needed things for this. We will go ahead and fast forward through this part. Okay, that's done. So now I'm going to create the environment. Now here it specifies the version of Python that we're going to use. I'm going to actually use 3.8 because it's supported by Torch that I'm installing. You might be able to put a later version on there. There is a Python 3.9, but not everything that I need is yet supported by that. And I don't think Anaconda as of right now, which is just a few weeks after 3.9 was added, I'm not sure everything is completely up on that. So I am going to go ahead and run this command, but I am going to do Python 3.8. Now, if you put too late of a version in there, then you're, you're just going to get an error down here when you try to install Torch, it's just going to tell you it, it doesn't exist because it doesn't exist for the version of Python you're trying. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Put 3.8 in there. And I'll probably update this instruction soon. So we're creating a Conda environment called Torch that is running Python 3.8. And I'm going to say yes. This takes a moment. So we're going to go ahead and fast forward through this. All right. This is ready. So I'm going to do Conda activate. Okay, I think I need to restart my shell. You might get the same error. So restarting my terminal. Ah, notice I have this base here that used to not be there. That lets me know this is working. So I'm going to do conda activate torch. And now I'm in my new torch environment. And going down here, I am going to now install NB conda because that's going to be needed to link the Jupyter notebook to this environment after I'm done installing everything. So that way it works good with Jupyter. We'll see Jupyter momentarily. All right, I'll let this run and fast forward through. Proceed, yes. Fast forward through this part. All right, now we are going to actually install PyTorch. Now you have some options here. If you wanna do the CPU only or for GPU and CPU. This computer does have a GPU on it. It has a Quadro 
RTX 5000, which is a quite a nice GPU. So let's make sure we can take advantage of that. So I'm going to copy this line. And if you installed too late of a version of Python that there's not a PyTorch available for it, this is the point at which you'll get an error. Then you're just going to want to redo that previous step where you created the environment and back down your Python version a bit. So I'm pasting that into here. Hopefully it finds it and everything is good. Yep, no problem. So we're going to go ahead and run this. This takes a little while because we've got to install the CUDA toolkit, which is needed for the GPU and all of that. This takes care of your drivers and everything. You do not have to worry about installing external drivers like is normally a real pain in the neck as far as GPU is concerned. Okay, PyTorch is installed. Now there's some other tools that I typically like to use with these. So I will run this tools YAML file. If you want to get that file, let me go ahead and um, there's actually a link here. So I'm going to right click this and do copy link address. There's several ways to go about doing this, but we're in Unix, so I can do wget to download it. Paste in the path and there, there you go. And I am going to now run this conda environment update command. These are basically all of the additional libraries that you would need for my machine learning class, but they're a good, I think they're a good starting point running that now. We'll go ahead and fast forward through this. This does take a moment. And again, make sure you're in the Torch environment. Not that you would have changed out of it, but if you happen to restart or something, you do need to be in that environment. You can ignore that conda activate. It's done now because everything we're going to use Torch. You don't want to activate it directly by the path. Next step, you need to register your environment. So this is basically just putting the entry inside of your Jupyter Notebook so that it's able to find it. This registers your kernel. Now I'm going to change that 37 to a 38. This is really just a string that is displayed to the end user in Jupyter, but I like to have it correct. So I'll press enter and run that. And that's very quick. It should be there now. So now I'm going to launch Jupyter Notebook. We should be pretty much done. Okay, we're launching it. It opens up another browser window. I am going to create a new notebook. You'll see the options here. These are other ones that I installed, like I have one for Rapids. We'll do 3.8 PyTorch, and Python is now available. You should be able to print Hello World, and that's available. I'm going to go back to my instruction page because I have some useful code there that you can make use of. This will test your environment and tell you what version of PyTorch you have and if the GPU is available. I'm going to paste that into there and execute it. GPU is available. That's always a happy moment. If it's not, I very much suggest restarting your computer. Sometimes that makes a difference. But if, if you followed all the steps, okay, you should now be here with a working PyTorch environment. If you want to actually do something real with it, I do have an example. My, my course is primarily Keras TensorFlow. But I do have one example here and growing. You'll, you might hopefully see more. If you go to PyTorch in my deep learning course, and I have a environment here or a work notebook that does the iris data set. So this shows you how to actually do this. It's all pretty much in one pane. You could Oops, that's important. You could download this notebook and run it that way. That might be easier, but I'm just going to copy and paste it here just so I can run a quick example. Okay, it's training. Trains to a lower rate. 0 0.56 loss. That's pretty close to what this had trained to as well. Copy this as well. Put this into the next cell. Run it. And we can see the accuracy is quite good. Iris data set is not, not that hard. All right. Thank you for watching this video. And if you're interested in all things deep learning AI, please subscribe to my channel. Let me know if you want to see more PyTorch videos in the comments.